Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So I'm out here in my shop today. I'm doing some maintenance work on my lathe and they recommend changing the oil in the headstock and the gearbox and in the apron on this machine at the 20 hour mark. Uh, it's not like it has an hour meter, so I'm just kind of guessing. Figured let's just change it and get it done. And I've already drained and changed the oil in the headstock and in the gearbox. And I considered doing some 3D prints for that, but this time, since it's the first time I'm changing it, I just used some aluminum tape, but I can think of ways that we could probably improve the oil change experience on this lathe with 3D printing. Um, the, the drain for the headstock is back here behind these gears. I had these gears off, and I'll get to that in a minute because that's actually the reason for today's print. But you drain the oil in the headstock through that bolt back there, and then you drain the oil for the gearbox with that bolt down there. And if you're wondering where the oil goes, yeah, so was I. I'll put a picture up here on the screen of what I came up with to get the oil to drain out of that hole and down into a pan. It worked. I'm thinking if I have to change the oil in this machine on a fairly regular basis, I might try and come up with sort of a magnetic spout uh, that maybe I'd put a little bit like, a, like some grease on the back of it and then uh, to seal it and then have magnets hold it in place. So when I pull that out, it sort of duplicates, you know, what the uh, the aluminum tape that I sort of rigged up did. And same thing for this one down here. I just used a single piece of aluminum tape and it worked out pretty well. I really didn't spill any oil. But what I want to look at today is this safety switch up here. What you can't see is there's a whole cover that, that goes over this side of the machine. Normally you wouldn't see this and, you know, we shouldn't be seeing this or be able to touch it when the machine's running because it's pretty dangerous. We take this cover off any time that we need to either adjust the belt tension or change out the change gears on here. So this lathe will cut all different sorts of thread pitches and most of them you can cut just by changing the position of these two levers or these two tumblers here on the front. But if we can't set the correct, um, you know, advance or reverse speed on the carriage with that, we have to change out the actual gears on this side or at least flip this set over so it's driven by this gear instead of this one. And every time we do that, we have to reset the mesh on those gears, or if we're adjusting the, the belt tension, or if we you know, move the motor in some fashion, we need to make sure that the belts are running correctly. Well, we can't run any of this with the cover off, and there is a key that actually goes into this interlock up here that's attached to the side cover. And every time I've taken the cover off and you know, had to set the mesh on the gears or adjust the belt tension, I've ended up removing the key from the door sticking it in here, checking to make sure my mesh looks good, checking to make sure the belts look like they're running good, and then putting the key back in the door and putting the whole door back on the side. That's a bit of a pain because the key doesn't like auto align. I, I end up, you know, a little bit of trial and error adjusting the way the key mounts so that it fits perfectly into this interlock switch when I reinstall it back on the door. Let me, let me go over to the door, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so here's the, the, uh, the door or the side cover for the lathe, and here is the key. And you can see there are two screws up here uh, that hold the overall, uh, this, this galvanized plate, and then there's two screws up here that hold the key in place. So you have a fair amount of adjustment there, and you know, it, it doesn't take a ton of trial and error. I mean, usually I'll get it on sort of the second try of you know, adjusting these guys that this key slides in nicely, but it's a pain. And I'm thinking maybe we can just 3D print a key. It shouldn't be too hard to do. I mean, you know, I can draw that in a matter of probably a couple of minutes, but I want to do it right. And what I mean by that is I want to think through about how this key is working, make sure we're designing this part, that we're optimizing uh, the strength of where the layer lines are positioned in the part. And I also want to make the key that we can keep it on the inside. So I'm thinking maybe we integrate some magnets into it that either we can attach it to the inside of this cover or just stick it on the side of the, uh, you know, the headstock of the lathe so that when I pull this off, our temporary key or our bypass key stays in there. I can take it off, just, you know, pull it off and put it in place and then take it out and reinstall this cover without messing with this key every time. I'm gonna take some measurements of this as well to see how, uh, how thick of, a, of an interlock switch that I, or, or I guess interlock key that I think we can, we can squeeze in there. All right, I've got my measurements. I'm gonna go draw this, but I just wanted to show you what I typically do for something like this. Cause a lot of the things we do in this channel are really complex and it just doesn't make sense to show you my process for measuring it and thinking it through, but this is super simple. So what I did was just draw up the rough shape of this. 
uh, capture all the dimensions that I think I need to design it. I know not every measurement is there, but I think I have all the ones that I need and the other ones I can infer from what I have. Uh, the opening for where this key goes into on the actual interlock switch, I measured at 2.96, it's probably closer to three. I didn't want to squeeze too hard on the plastic. And this key is 2.1 millimeters thick. So I'll probably size to maybe 2.7 or 2. Point, at least 2.5. Um, I don't know that the rest of the interlock switch is going to tolerate, say, that full thickness of 2.96, but chances are we can probably go thicker than the 2.1, I guess is what I'm getting at. The other thing that I do is I'll take a picture, and I'll take this right up to my desk where I'm going to do the actual design for this, uh, just as kind of an idiot check to make sure that everything is looking good. And also, like, I didn't try and measure the actual... Uh, curve here at the end of that relief. I think that's just to guide it into the switch easier. But having the picture when I do the drawing, I can sort of at least approximate, you know, what's actually there on that round over at the end. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go take these measurements up to my desk and I'm going to try this, try and draw this up and I'll bring you guys back. <laughs> All right, and here is the design that I came up with for this. And I'm pretty sure that the way that this interlock works is that there is a center section that has to drop down into this rectangle while these two pins at the end are pushing in on another part of that interlock. So I think we're well positioned to just print this face down on the bed and have good strength. I don't think the layer lines are gonna cause us any issue with this potentially snapping off in the interlock, but I guess we're not gonna know for sure until we try it. Uh, I think there's, the way that the switch works, I think that this center part that drops in is just on a hinge, I think. It's hard to tell by looking in there. So I beveled these two parts here to make it easy for this to hinge that up and down as this is either inserted or removed. Um, just again, trying to give ourselves the best chance of this not breaking off in there and being sufficiently strong. I also sized the, the key part here to be 2.7 millimeters high. Again, our actual metal key is 2.1 millimeters high, but it seems like we have three millimeters of overall um, height inside that switch to work with. So hopefully this fits. If not, we can always make this a little bit thinner, but if we can get away with 2.7 millimeters, I'm pretty sure that this thing is gonna be plenty strong in, um, in PLA uh, to hold up to, to use. I guess we could also print this in TPU, then it would be pretty indestructible. And if we printed it solid, it would be strong enough, but I don't want to get ahead of myself. I think PLA is going to be sufficient for this. I did thicken it up back here at the back, and I tried to provide some relief here where we are going to be fighting against the layer lines in this print. This is sort of a handle, and this is not necessarily really to pull on to, to insert the key and take it in and out, although I guess in use it's probably going to end up sort of being used that way. I mean, ideally we'd grip on this section here, but this tab here is to make it so that I can remove this key from where it's stored. And what I mean by that is I put three recesses on the back here for neodymium magnets. And if I hide these, you can see it's gonna print with these just as bores back here. And then I'm gonna press into place three neodymium magnets. Three probably sounds like overkill. One's probably enough, two is plenty. And you know, again, three sounds like overkill. But I want this key to stay in place wherever we stick it on either the inside of that back cover or to the headstock of the lathe itself. That machine vibrates when it's running and I just don't want this to migrate and fall into something where it doesn't belong and potentially cause damage. And again, I feel like just by going overkill with those magnets, I think it'll stay in place. So the idea is, you know, this is stuck flat on its back in the same, you know, the same face that we're gonna print on the bed. And we would grab here to just, you know, pull it to sort of lift it from the surface that it is stuck to. I colored this red because I figured we'd print this in red PLA just to denote that it is, you know, sort of a safety item. And uh, figure we uh, we can do then white text for where it says bypass key. And I'll do this in either, um, I think I colored it white here. This could really be white or gray, and probably whatever I happen to have in the AMS for my P1S. So. I'm gonna print this out and uh, I'll bring you guys back. Mm -hmm. 
All right, and our print is done. And while it was printing, I cleaned up my mess here around the lathe. So let's try plugging it in. And if this works, we should hear a clunk from the safety interlock relay in the back and our light here, this one that glows uh, just white should turn on. So let's see. Yeah, it's working. Actually, it goes in really easy. Like I barely have to push it, but it's not easy to get out. So actually, I'm pulling, I'm not pulling so hard to pull it out that I feel like it's gonna break, but we're probably, probably halfway there. Like if I had to pull twice as hard as I'm pulling, I wouldn't be surprised if that gave way. And I'm noticing, it seems like there's a lot of play in there. I mean, we already designed this thicker than the metal key, but it seems like it's, it's going back and forth, probably five millimeters. And there's still a lot of play side to side. I think we could go bigger. And where I'm thinking we'll go bigger is, uh, is this piece here. That's the piece I'm worried about. Um, I think the way this switch is working now that I'm feeling the key go in and out, because you can't really feel this. You don't have any tactile uh, sense on it when you're putting the side cover on, because it's just a big heavy cover that's aligning with these studs here. I think actually what's happening is, I think there's like a rotary switch in there. I think this flat part is keying into like a socket in a rotary switch, and then it drives it around, which would make sense because then you couldn't override this by like sticking a screwdriver in um, or something else. It would have to be like some sort of device that has this, this piece that runs across to kind of key into that, that, that drum that rotates it back. But the hole in it must be huge in comparison to that section there. I'm going to print another one of these, and I'm going to increase the size of, uh, of that piece that runs across. And I think I'm going to, just seeing how this fits in here, how much side-to-side -side play I have, I think I'm going to thicken up the sides as well. So that this is both um, uh, deeper, I guess, and also the sides are narrower, which both of those should help this be as strong a part as it can be. Also off camera, I did try pressing one of the neodymium magnets in just to see if our hole size was good. And it took a good amount of force to press that in, but it didn't stress the, uh, the plastic anywhere. So I think that's good. And like one is probably sufficient. Yeah, I mean, I feel like even with one, particularly if we stick it in a spot like this, it'd probably be fine. But like I said, I'd rather have it overkill and never fall into the works of the machine back here while it's running, then, um, then have it come loose one day. So, all right, let me go print another one and I'll bring you guys back. All right, printed one with the changes and I'll show you next to this one, just to compare, you can see we are thicker here on the sides and uh, the piece that engages that drum is way thicker. So let's try it. Huh. Now it won't go in. I guess we have to be thinner with that section. It's really weird. The other one had so much play. It's not jammed, is it? That's weird. I wonder if maybe it's flipping like just all the way back and then we have that extra play. Um, because this one will not go in. I don't want to force it and break it off in there. Yeah, that's not going in. But. It does start in, so I think we're fine with the, I guess you could say the narrowed width of the inside here, but I think we made that part too thick, so. All right, I guess we're going for V3. All right, let's see if third time's a charm. So I kept the, the narrower width between the sides uh, that matched our V2, but I went back to a similar size center section here as our V1. I actually made it slightly bigger. I made it a 0.5 millimeter bigger, just kind of rolled the dice a little bit. And we're still substantially more stout than this one because we're wider, or I guess we're narrower in the middle, meaning we have more meat on the sides here as well. So let's see. Oh yeah. Oh, and actually, so this, this has no play in it at all now. This one won't go back and forth at all. I wonder if maybe we were actually off a little bit on the size of the first one and it was like the switch was over rotating because that, you know what, that goes in and comes out easier. 
Yeah, that's substantially easier to pull out than this one. Yeah, I think this, this one might be over-rotating that drum switch inside there. So, all right, let's, uh, let's get some magnets pressed into this. All right, I should mention all the SDLs for anything that I design in this channel are available for free on my site, fpfdesigns.com. And it'll be, this will be the one, our final version will be the one that's available in the, uh, in the download. And I will link to these magnets that I'm using as well. Don't wait till you need these, just buy a big pack of them. I've actually, uh, I've, I've run out and, not, and forgotten to order more and kicked myself because these are so nice to have on hand for stuff like this. And I have two sizes. I think these are the eight millimeter ones. And I have one size smaller as well for really small prints, but I probably use the eights more than anything else. I'll link these down in the description. Oh yeah, that's, um, that's not going anywhere. Honestly, I think four magnets would have made it actually a little bit almost too hard to pull off the, the headstock, but that's good. So I think with three on there, if I slip this down and just let it sort of rest with the flat side against our interlock switch and this side against the, um, the retainer for the bearing here on the spindle, I think that'll be perfect. And then when I come back in here next time and I need to swap out the gears or adjust the belts, I'll have it handy and ready to just plug in and go. You know, I guess I should probably actually make sure the lathe does work. I see the light coming on and I hear the interlock, but I should probably test it. Oh yeah. Guys, as always, thanks for hanging out in the shop with me for this week's video. A pretty simple one this week, but even with the simple stuff like this, I really like to take the time, think through how I'm gonna use it, how I'm hoping to use it the next time I need it, and really design it in the best way possible. And I think, you know, putting the little handle on here to grab with your thumb and forefinger, putting the magnets there so this guy always has a place to, to be and will stay put was worth the extra time. I'll be really happy to see that the next time I pull this cover off and need to bypass this, uh, this, this interlock. So let me know down in the comments if there's anything different that you would have done. And if this is by chance your first time on the channel, I do a new video every single week. It's always a functional print, no multicolored garbage. I mean, I guess that's multicolored, but with purpose, right? I mean, you know, we can easily read it because the lettering is in white and red because, well, it's a safety bypass. So if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you really enjoyed it, you want to check out some of my other videos, please do. And if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday. Mm -hmm.